Our first set of episodes of Study in Slovakia have been great, but now the producer and I decided to take the next series of episodes on the road. So my friend and I took a cross-country journey from Košice to Bratislava. These episodes were filmed near the end of 2020 during social distancing, but before the COVID-19 lockdowns. After enjoying dinner downtown the first night, I got some good rest at a nice downtown apartment, and now I'm ready to tour Bratislava with our interviewee Nick. All right, so first question. So how did you get here from Slovakia? So why Slovakia? Basically, as like every mechanical engineer would say, Slovakia is one of the best automobile parts manufacturer and they have a very big stable economy in automobile productions. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that why not I won't study here where everything is like originally are produced and manufactured. Also, they have one of the best economic stability according to the automobile. And like, I was interested. Uh, so where did you study and what was school like for you? Uh, I, I started my master's in Technical University of Košice, but I was in different faculty. It's called the Faculty of Manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do masters in automotive production technology, so I was in Prešov for two years. Mm -hmm. And compared to Košice, Prešov is a really small city. Yeah, yeah. It's like really small, uh, but still you can manage to do many things around, like go for a sport activity, gather new friends, and it's it's pretty much like being in a village, in a European village. Mm. And it was cool over there. Where are you taking us to the first starting off? First, on? you're gonna see the Slavin Memorial. Okay. It's one of the oldest architecture in Bratislava. Okay. And also you can see the symmetry of the World War Warriors. Okay. And most importantly, you see a better view of the whole Bratislava. Okay. Yeah, no, this is really, really beautiful. So, uh, th uh, once again, thank you for taking us here. This is amazing. You're welcome. All right, so let us continue. So, let me ask you, uh, so what was school like for you in Preshov? So, what was mechanical engineering school like? Well, it's pretty decent over there. They have very good professors. Mm -hmm. And the way their teaching is really good, I would say. Uh, they have a different perspective and everything is uh, taught in a better way mm -hmm. than in India because I did my bachelor's of mechanical engineering in India and here I did the master's in automotive production. Mm -hmm. So basically one of the big difference that I find is how detailed they go inside the subject. Mm. So it's not only just the basics that they teach you, they also teach you what's the technology that's currently using in the market up to date and what's going to be the future how it's going to be so it's like detailedly explained and it's it's very informative and they know exactly what they're doing so i really loved that and their approach for the exams and the tests were really interesting hmm. uh, they had a different perspective not only just copy pasting what's in the book and in the exam sheet but it's like they they test your brain they, yeah. they're like okay what if it's gonna be in an another way how are you gonna solve it mm. it's it was really uh, informative and i would i would really say that it's the best way best approach to to make a budding engineer or a professional okay so to follow up on that so let's say any future mechanical engineers uh what would be some of the biggest challenges studying in a school like what are some of the things they need to do to succeed in school like what are the challenges and what do they need to do to succeed well i would say that not only just focusing on the subject that is taught in the school you need to try to explore what is outside in the market do your own research just doing a homework is not uh, something that makes you really good pro an engineer you need to know what is there in the market you need to explore you need to find you need to do research like why it's happening and not only working uh, at or studying at particular time you need to be open for everything mm. and not only attending the classes as i said before you really need to google you really need mm -hmm. to google and know everything 
if you're really interested and try to explore as much as possible because it will lead you somewhere really interesting trust me okay so what another so what was when we were doing your masters what was your favorite subject and what was like the most challenging subject when you were uh, studying well the most challenging would be the robotics programming because mm -hmm. I really I'm not good in programming uh, but still I did understand the basics and the professor he was really good uh, he tried to encourage me and tell me what how it works like yeah, basically yeah. for me I'm more a uh, house stuff work guy, guy so if I understand how it works it's easy for me yeah. so not only they they help you in in uh, what you're lacking it's like they support you they motivate you so that's I think it's really important for a professor or a teaching person to to motivate their own student hmm. okay and what, what was your favorite subject uh, when you did your masters what did you enjoy the most well I would say uh, applied mathematics mm -hmm. was my favorite and not only because of the subject I, I didn't like mathematics when I was young <laughs> I started to like it when only once when I moved to Slovakia because I really had a good professor mm. and he encouraged me he he told me to see the world in a in a different perspective and it really helped like I, I never knew that I'm really good in mathematics <laughs> and it, it was really interesting I would say so it's one of the best subject and best professor that I had and uh, so to, to follow up on that like in terms of school and at work uh, where do you currently work uh, I work for Johnson controls I'm an application engineer mm. uh, I design HVAC system it's basically heat ventilation and air conditioners it's for it's an American company mm -hmm. and I'm supporting the American market in designing the HVAC and integrating them to the controllers and artificial intelligence so basically I we design the smart buildings <laughs> in in this my uh, mind is Right now. <laughs> it's normal. I get that a lot. What could you apply from what you learned to school to your current job? Like, what uh, was there anything from school that like directly helped you where you're currently at? Of course, everything. Uh, the subjects that you had. For example, I had thermal engineering. Mm -hmm. Basically, HVAC is thermal. Mm -hmm. You need to know the heat. You need to know the mass transfer and everything. And also my master's like automotive production, I was more focused on the automation technology. And now like everything is automated. You take a mobile phone, you take a refrigerator, even everything is automated. Mm. So that I combined my bachelor's and master's and like here I am making difference in the world. What we're talking about now is what did you do after school? What was your life like after school? Well, after school I had the job already, I had the offer letter from the company, so like I would say what I did to get the job. Yeah. Uh, basically, after the first year you have a summer vacation for uh, four to five months and I didn't want to waste by going back to India or, or traveling yeah, to yeah. different, but rather what I did was searching for a good internship hmm. and I got an internship in... Paris, uh, and the company is called Bosch. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of Bosch. Yeah, they, they literally make all the parts and cars, and uh, I was in special divisions for brakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my life in Paris was also pretty interesting. It's like, whoa, it's too many people, and life was really fast. <laughs> so, why I'm telling this is that you need to do something to get the job, just but not only by studying you get the job you need to do some extra things that to know to make yourself that you are in the market already you are ready to work you, you know, i'm ready to put my calculation i'm, I'm, I'm ready for analysis so yeah. you need to show that and well my university also helped me uh, a lot in getting the internship but basically the company needs just how focused and how determined interested you are and once you show them you're gonna get the internship mm. and after the internship I came back to Slovakia for my master thesis which is the final thesis mm -hmm. and I finished my thesis and meanwhile I was applying for jobs but it's not an easy thing to get a job uh, especially not only here especially anywhere in Europe one yeah. you need to know a European language if you know only English, that would be really difficult. You need to know definitely additional European language, which is good for your profile and for your career also. Mm. 
Well, I mean, what was, so the job here, what was the key steps that caused you to get your job here? Well, my, I would say my internship and my schoolwork, what I did, mm -hmm. and uh, like keeping your knowledge up to date. What would you say to students in terms of trying to find a job? What do you think uh, students will need to do? Like uh, in, uh, engineering in general. Number one, please learn a language. Yes. Additional European language. It doesn't matter if it's going to be Slovak or Czech, anything. German, French, Hungarian also if possible. It's it's really, very really important to get a job. Uh, number two is like, be focused in what you want. For example, you just see an ad advertisement that, okay, it's an engineer. What do I do? I, I design engineer. I just click apply. Don't, don't do that. Check mm -hmm. the company profile. Check the position. If it's really suitable, uh, check the actual thing, what the, the company is doing. See if it is going to be good for your future. Why is this? Is that, okay, you might get the job. You might get the, an interview. But when you are in the interview, you would mess up in a way. Yeah. It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm being pessimistic but it, it is normal the interviewer is going to see that okay he's clearly not interested so what happens is that when you have a defect you have in yourself that okay I don't know what so be specific in what path you want mm. and and just hit the, the ball inside the goal mm. so don't don't apply everything know what you want and, and apply mm. and, and one thing really have a good unique CV and do in in, in in university try to do like as many things as possible for example like knowing things uh, writing a journal or writing a paper making presentations uh, and etc hmm. welcome welcome back to study in Slovakia so Tell us, where are we right now? Now we are in the Starimost Bridge. Mm. It's one of the beautiful bridge where you have a really good lower view of Bratislava cool. and the river. No, it's very, very, very nice. I mean, you pointed out earlier, there's that uh, guy, it's a lot of people canoe here in the river. Yeah, mm. they do. It's very nice, good exercise. <laughs> so speaking of canoeing and other activities, yep. what do you do for fun here? in uh, Bratislava? Uh, during summer and autumn, other than winter, I go for a bike ride. Yeah. You know, the Austrian border is nearby. Maybe you can just bike all the way to Heinburg. It's a near city in, in Austria. Mm -hmm. And you can also drive to the tri-country border. Yeah. It's called uh, Budapest, Austrian and Slovakian border. Mm -hmm. And basically, bike is a really good sports activity to do. You also have a good bike path around the city, inside the city, and yeah. also outskirts. You can just ride them wherever you want, and it's pretty safe also. Mm -hmm. And other than biking, also, you can socialize. Uh, they have different meetups according to your hobby. For example, if you, have, if you love cooking, you have a cooking meetup, you just gather around people. So, quick follow-up question. Do you get to practice your German here ever in Bratislava? Yes, yes. Uh, especially when you go to a restaurant, they ask like English or German. Hmm. Or, you know, at work sometimes uh, people speak in German. And also, you can also hear German speaking around. And also, I like to go into the border of Austria and you definitely need to know German hmm. for that. So, it's pretty much uh, important here. Cool, well, I'm glad. Guten Tag, I'm glad you yeah. can practice it a little bit. And uh, also you told me you did some pretty cool abstract art. Uh, what do yes. you, tell me about your art, uh, your art hobby. Yes, um, I think I'm painting since I was three years old, mm -hmm. but uh, I did not find what was my art because every artist has their own taste of art that they like so I was exploring these many years yeah and last year I found that uh, it's I, I love abstract painting so I started to have a, a take some classes in Bratislava and I did a eight month diploma course mm. in it and I have the certificate for it now so I, I really enjoy doing it uh, basically in the weekends or you know now it's COVID so you're basically stuck at home so in the evening sometimes it's relaxing for me to just take the brush and put in what's inside my head 
and starts painting and it's it's really relaxing mm. well I, uh one of the things i always believe i always talk with everybody who ever studied school it's so important to have a key hobby to it's escape true. like so many people ask me why do i even do videos and stuff while you're in medical school because it's like you really need a form of escape so that abstract art now, even if you had to do all those hard calculations or you were just beating your head it was a hard day i'm sure it was just yep. a great form of escape it's true hmm. so to wrap up the final major question i want to ask you is why should somebody study in slovakia well slovakia is a country with different nationality also mm -hmm. uh, people here uh, come from different countries around the earth and you can meet them try to know like what is happening around them and you, you you have a better exposure that's the word that i was trying to find like you have a better exposure and the education system is also good it's like what you take in and what you want to basically give it back hmm. so because not only like taking in is important you need to give something back so i would say that people culture and also if you're interested in sport activities like biking around or you know exploring different castles you like history everything is good here you feel like more comfortable mm. all right so hey thank you for this amazing day in the uh scenery of bratislava you're hey, welcome great day so thank you very much thank you thank you too thank you so much Nikolai, for this amazing day and if you're interested in studying in slovakia just like this guy please check out the website studyinslovakia.sk if you need any help in regards to studying here. My name is Peter and you guys take care.